Hey, what's up, guys? I need a haircut. Let's fix that. There we go. So this week, we're going to talk about using things like linear wipe to instead make a line wipe. So let's check it out. So the basic idea is that we're going to take two wipes from pretty much any angle and link them together with an expression so that they move together in unison across the frame. So this is what that looks like. It's very easy to set up. On the layer that I actually want this line wipe to occur, I have two line sweeps. They both have the same settings other than completion and direction. You can see the direction is 180 from each other. So in the first completion, we have a simple expression that pulls in some expression controls from this controller layer, where I have line load width, line load completion, and this position offset just moves this text around. So in that line sweep, our expression pulls in the width controller for the line load width. It pulls in the completion value from the line load completion slider. And then our final output for the completion parameter is completion minus width divided by two. So this first line sweep is basically set to the completion slider in the controller minus half of the distance of the line load width. And that basically determines how thick the gap is between these things. So if I change that, you can see that we're going to get a bigger value. So we take half of this width from the first line sweep and then half from the second. The second completion value is almost exactly the same with one small exception. Let's load that into here. And the only difference in this one is that completion is equal to 100 minus the line load completion value. So since this one is the opposite of that one because of the direction, these two should always add up to 100 if they're going to be right at the same spot, basically. So when you do that, you can animate the completion value in the controller, and you have this block that goes down with the text. That's pretty much the same setup for the rest of these things and any other different type of wipe you want to use. So now that we have that expression out of the way, let's close this up and switch back to a different workspace. So let's go in this second comp. You can see this one's actually using displacement. And there's a gap in here because this is offset in timing. Depending on what you do, the timing needs to be offset in this one to match up a little bit better because we're doing displacement before our line sweeps. And in this case, line sweep actually is based on the size of the layer itself, unlike something like linear wipe. That means that the line sweep area on this displaced layer is different than the vanilla one in the background, which just sweeps down because the displacement actually makes the top layer bigger. You can combat that in a few different ways. You can actually take these effects and move them down so that now it'll match up, although we're still differently timed because I have it set up as an expression, but that can fix it. Sometimes you'll get a piece like this at the end, and you can get rid of that by animating the width down to zero. But sometimes just changing the order of your effects will fix that. But the way the line sweep works, if you don't go all the way to zero, there's some pieces left here. And since this thing is sticking so far out to the right side, because of the way that I have this line sweep set up, that part is still visible. Let's throw a line sweep on the background so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So if we move this down, you can see it goes away in blocks. So the way that this one's probably cut off, this piece isn't visible, but since this piece sticks in here, this is still visible. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, to offset the timing, it's just a simple change in here. To the completion slider, we just add dot value at time, and then I added two frames, so it's time plus two divided by 24, which is the frame rate of this composition. You can also rig this up with this comp dot frame duration, but I'm not going to change the timing of this, so it doesn't really matter. So that offsets both the front and the back by two frames. So it leaves us with a little bit of a gap. You can also just extend the back part and so that the front part can still cover up this gap. Or you can also change the width up here so it's a little wider. It's up to you. You might also mess with the slant of the line sweeps or whatever. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Let's check out another example where you can actually use a text animator as well. In this case, I took a quote from, I think it was a Sotheby's auction where Banksy had that painting automatically uh, shred itself. And because Banksy is basically just printing money with his uh, work, I put some dollar signs in this thing. So that's just a text animator in here that changes them to dollar signs. So there's something kind of dumb about this line sweep effect for some reasons, probably because it's pretty old, I would imagine. And that's that it has a rotation value, well, a direction value, but it's not keyframeable, which means that you can't put an expression on it which is unfortunate because you can make this thing rotate in any direction just by setting one of these 180 to the other and then making an angle control. You can do that with linear wipe and probably other wipes, but you can't do it with line sweep. So for that, we do a different trick that I've showed you guys in the past where we have two transform effects. One rotates it one way, so we can rotate 45 degrees in this case, 
and the other rotates it back the opposite direction. So one goes plus 45, the other one goes negative 45 around the line sweep. So basically the line sweep is working on a rotated image and then we unrotate it. This is hooked up to a controller in here. So you can go whatever direction you want. So here's just another example of how you can use it. All of this stuff is going to be in the project file download, including the textures. One of them is from an ISO 50 tutorial from Computer Arts Magazine, I think, from like forever ago. Hopefully I can redistribute that. The other stuff is from Bash Corpo, which I believe is bashcorpo.dk. But what's really cool is that he put that stuff out there and you can redistribute it or do whatever you want with it without having even attribution. So I'm going to include a couple of those in here, but you can go to his website as well and download the rest of them. They're pretty useful paper textures. I use the one in here all the time. I have used it for years. In my case, it's numbered 10, but I think it's like 8 on the website. I think I probably grabbed it off like DeviantArt like 12 years ago. So of course, these are wipes, so you can do them on anything, not just text. We can use them on images too. So here's what that looks like. It's just an offset displacement map, minimax levels, hue hat, whatever, just so you can see what it looks like. So that's it. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.